All right, so that truck thumbnail might cost me a few clicks for my normal viewers, but if you're here, I think you're in for a pretty good treat. I've got a really cool episode with a lot of cool details to nerd out over, starting with the fact that I'm introducing a new build to the channel. I bought a new to me truck, and the first thing I did was take it all the way up to Bozeman, Montana to visit my friends at Go Fast Campers. While I was there, they gave me the opportunity to see how they build all of their cool parts and pieces for their 100% American-made tents and campers. I've got a stockpile of parts and pieces for some upcoming build episodes on this thing, because here in a couple of months, I've got a week-long off-road trip, and I gotta get this thing ready. So, let's start off on a new project. Let me show you guys what's going on. Let's head to Bozeman, Montana. It's been more than a week since my last episode because my girlfriend and I decided to take some time and make the 17 hour drive each way to Bozeman, Montana. Now, while most go to Montana for the beautiful sights and scenery, we went for a completely different reason. We went for cool truck parts, thanks to our friends at Go Fast Campers. So let me show you the new to me truck. This is a 2006 four wheel drive, 6.0 power stroke crew cab short bed F250. Yeah. That was a mouthful. Now for the Ford guys out there, this 6.0 has been fully bulletproofed and packs a ton of power under the hood. But for everybody else, this is the replacement for the 7.3 OBS Ford that you've seen in some previous episodes. I've got a lot of big plans in store for this truck, such as a new Carly Dominator suspension with King shocks and new wheels with 40 inch tires. But we're gonna start with the most important piece of the puzzle, the Go Fast Camper. Inside GFC's install facility, my camper was waiting on a pallet ready for installation, and this was a really big moment for me. I was there for the install of the very first GoFast camper on my buddy Jim Bob's truck, and I've had a number of GoFast rooftop tents in the meantime. But I went out of my way this time around to buy a short bed truck just so I could join the GoFast camper club. Now because each tent is made to order and custom tailored to its specific vehicle, the installation was a breeze. But before I actually show you guys the inner workings of this thing, I want to show you something a little bit cooler. I want to show you how it's made. Now maybe somehow you haven't connected the dots, but if you're wondering what a GoFast camper is, it's a truck bed topper with an integrated rooftop tent. And the reason I want to show you how they're made is because they're made entirely by hand here in the United States. And as friends of mine that run a small business, that's something I want to celebrate about GoFast. Now, as you might expect, each tent begins as raw materials, or in this case, extrusions. And each extrusion is loaded into a CNC mill and machined on an order by order basis. Each of these blue carts represents a different tent for a different customer, and each one is built specifically for them. Now alongside the big machines are a series of smaller ones, and these ones are tackling much smaller pieces, and what's cool about them is that they are completely automated. From the process of loading them up, to the machining, to removal of the part, and every operation in between, they're all handled by robotic arms. That means only one person is needed in order to monitor all four machines at once. And that, in turn, means the efficiency at GoFast Campers is incredibly high. Now, if we look at the parts these machines are turning out, they're going from blank billet pieces of aluminum to things like this, a billet light mount that attaches to their tents. But they're machining a lot more than just light mounts. They're machining all of the hinges and all of the T-nuts and every single other tiny component needed to build these tents from the ground up. In each of these bins, you'll find something made here at GoFast Campers. Eventually, all of these parts are pulled together and assembled on a cart, like you see here. Each cart represents an individual camper and has just enough parts to build that camper itself. No more, no less. Along with all the individual pieces, you have the side panels for each camper. Customers are able to spec details like color and whether or not they want front and rear windows, but things like the locks and the gaskets are all to GFC spec. Of course, that covers all of the hard parts that are needed in order to build a GoFast camper, but there's still a lot more needed to finish one. If we jump over to the fabric warehouse, we'll see all of the panels being cut and sewn in-house. GoFast Campers has the recipe for this, although they do let customers pick a few small details, such as what color offerings they want for their fabric and whether or not they want side doors and windows. The folks in this building pump out multiple tents a day, each one made specifically to order. It makes my progress in the Ferrari look really slow, but then again, at least I'm not running a business like this one. That does bring us to assembly though, and over in the assembly wing, the team is busy assembling four campers at one time. 
The team over here is incredibly talented, having to know how the campers go together, bottom to top, each and every piece. Even more impressive, they're able to pump out 40 campers every week. And to ice the cake of impressiveness, it only takes a single day for this entire process to take place. From unmachined extrusions and uncut fabric to a completely finished camper specified for a customer. So let's look at mine. So as you guys can tell, I opted for a black camper, and my thought process there was mainly to avoid looking like I'm driving around a contractor's truck on the day-to-day. -day. The details are incredible, and you've already seen, for the most part, how it goes together, so I'm sure plenty of you guys want to see how it actually functions. So let's get this thing opened up. What's quite cool about the GoFast camper is that all three sides can be opened. This gives some incredible access to anything I might keep in the bed, and has very few of the drawbacks that a normal bed topper might have. With the sides open in quote-unquote cabana mode, we've got nice shade around the truck and can see all of the sweet parts and pieces that we just watched get machined. Keen eyes might also spot all of the low-profile water seals that will keep water and dust out of the camper. So sure, it's an awesomely functional topper, but what about this whole camper thing? Well, let me pop open the tent and show you how it works. There's a reason it's called a go fast camper, and it's not just because you can go fast with it on the truck, totaling in at just over 300 pounds in total. It's because you can set up camp in a matter of seconds. Now, of course, you can enter the tent using a ladder through the front or either side door, but the main perk to the camper are the access panels underneath. They're completely configurable by the user, and all three front panels pop out. This means tons of standing room, changing room, escape from the weather, and a place to access all of your stuff in the bed without having to go out of the tent and around to the outside of the truck. In all, it's an incredible system, and I'm really excited to put it to work. Later this summer, my friends and I will be exploring the trails of Colorado for more than a week, and this will be home on the road. So a special thank you for years of support to the guys over at Go Fast Campers. I'm excited to be part of the family. So while I get the camper closed up, let's talk about what else we've got in store for the truck, because installing a camper isn't all that we're going to do. We need wheels, and we're going to go up in tire size, which is going to require a re-gear. It obviously has suspension on already, but we're going to completely revamp it, and I'll show you the parts at the end of the episode. But next on the list, we've got this. Two giant boxes made in Germany. It wouldn't be a Stanceworks build if we didn't squeeze some German parts onto a Ford truck. Take your best guess what might be inside, because my bet is you won't get it right. Inside, we've got some Schielmann seats. A pair of them for both the driver and the passenger. I was lucky enough to pick these up when I stopped by the Schielmann North America headquarters on my last trip through Portland, Oregon last summer. Now, if you've never seen or heard of a Schielmann seat, their specialty is orthopedic seats, seats with some of the most adjustment of any seat on the market. So these are going to be great for long hauls in the F-250 when we're driving across the country. To install them, I bought some bolt-in mounts from Wedge. These make the seat installation a bolt-in affair. Only four bolts are needed to remove the original seat, and those same four bolts will bolt in the new Schielmann in a matter of minutes. The shield mons include sliders, and the mounts include provisions for the factory seat belts. So this is a perfect solution for this truck. But we're not done yet. I still have a lot of other boxes in the shop, all of them branded Carly. If you aren't familiar, Carly is one of the top brands in off-road truck suspension, and all of this stuff is engineered specifically for our F-250. Now, we're not going to install it yet. We're still waiting on a couple of bits and pieces, but I wanted to at least give you a taste of what's inside. We've got everything for this thing, from new springs front and rear to spring buckets, radius arms, radius arm mounts, all new steering components, and one final box that requires a little bit less imagination. Inside of this one, we've got a beautiful set of gigantic King 3.0 shocks for all four corners. Now, I'm told by the guys at CJC who set me up with this suspension that this entire setup should make this truck ride like a couch and handle like a dream. And they promise if I wanted to, we could jump it. But that's a lot of mass to be moving through the air, so maybe we'll save that one for a future episode. 
But needless to say, I am beyond excited to get all these parts installed as soon as we get the last couple that we need. So there you guys have it, that's some truck content. If you guys have enjoyed this episode so far and you wanna see more of this truck, leave me some feedback, hit the like button, all that kind of stuff. Let me know that it's worth putting in the effort to make more episodes like this one because there's still a lot of work to do on this truck. The next episode should be all of our suspension install and hopefully we'll get to go out and actually test this stuff. It should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it and I hope that you guys are too, but you gotta let me know, you gotta leave me some feedback. Now, if you've made it this far in the episode, I've got two final updates for you. The first one is, as mentioned, we've got all of our shirts and everything, and these just showed up. This is your teaser, garage banners. These things came out absolutely amazing. I didn't order a ton of them. The Patreon supporters have first access to all of the gear that I've got going up for sale. I'm hopeful next week, Tuesday of next week, is the plan to go live with the t-shirts, the banners, and a handful of other things. So keep an eye out. And then last but not least, this update, this is the best one so far. I got word while I was in Montana, my wheels are finally being built. It's been, I don't know what, like six, eight months, but it's finally happening. It's down to machining and assembly at this point. So either end of this week or next week, we're gonna have wheels and oh my God, am I excited? Man, I've been waiting for this one. Anyways, thank you guys as always for the support. I'll catch you guys at the end of the week for the next episode. We'll dive back into the Ferrari and get something done. I'll see you then.